Indeed she is. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Scottsdale, Arizona, the WWE Universal Women's Champion, Nikki Bella. Go ahead, Bob, Champion. and tell us about how inspired you are. Not just me, Corey, but the entire WWE Universe. Nikki Bella, she is fearless. She is driven. Great role model as well. She had one of the longest title reigns in history. She's got two TV shows. She was on Dancing with the Stars. What else do you want? I'm kind of jealous, actually. Well, you're looking at the future right here. And from Knoxville, Tennessee, the undisputed women's champion, Bianca Belair, champion. WWE Universe, you are looking at a superstar who is simply blessed to be the best, just naturally better than everybody else, even when only doing the bare minimum. When you talk about some of that natural athletic talent, Corey, Bianca's been exceptional her entire life. She earned all SEC and all American honors in track and field at the University of Tennessee. And if you just ask her, she'll tell you why she's better than everybody else. You got eyes, Byron, you understand. A freak in the weight room, a beast in the ring. Bianca Belair can do it all. And she's got a lethal hair whip. And their partner from Norwich, England, the Raw Women's Champion, Paige. Without a doubt, Paige has changed this entire women's division. Heck, she's changed the entire WWE. The baddest woman on the planet. It absolutely amazes me how quickly Ronda Rousey and seamlessly made her transition from the world of mixed martial arts to WWE. She improves each and every time she steps in the ring. A real natural. And their opponents, first, from Venice Beach, California, the baddest woman on the planet, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Listen to this place. They're going nuts. And her partners, Nia Jax and Tamina. Plenty of action coming up as we have six of WWE's top names ready to go here. Oh man, Michael, six-man matches like this always remind me of world-class back in the 1980s.
This is it, folks. Three on three action underway. Guys, I have a feeling this is the type of match we'll go back and look at three or four times over the course of next week. In 2016, the New Day found themselves in the middle of a sick and twisted rivalry with the Wyatt family. Things escalated to the point where Bray Wyatt invited the New Day to do battle at the Wyatt family compound. The New Day accepted, but what followed was something no one expected or will ever be able to forget. What a strike! We've talked about six-man tag matches, and earlier you talked about one that caught the attention of the entire sports entertainment world. The New Day fought for survival amongst the darkness of the Wyatt family compound in a battle where pickaxes and cinder blocks were used as weapons and automobiles were used as battering rams. The New Day versus the Wyatts at the Wyatt family compound was not your traditional six-man tag match, but it showed what can happen when issues between factions can't be resolved through a sanctioned WWE match. I'll tell you what, none of the men who fought in that conflict will ever be the same. There are instances when a six-man tag match will feature a team where superstars have not always seen eye to eye or are in the midst of a disagreement. When that's the case, someone on the team must step up and be the voice of reason so the trio can function as a cohesive unit. Corey, earlier you talked about what needs to happen when members of a six-man team have differences or had differences in the past. If the team can't find a way to get on the same page, they will not last very long. Someone on the team has to step up and make sure for at least that match, everyone on the team can work together. That's easier said than done. Just because superstars might be favorites of the WWE Universe or have a common enemy, that doesn't mean they'll get along. It also doesn't mean that any past issues will magically go away. In this business, people have long memories, so if someone sees an issue on their team, they need to resolve it right away. When a superstar is in a six-man match, one of the most important things to remember is knowing when to tag out and get the fresh member of your team in the ring. We've talked about continuity many times on this program. It's more than that. You don't want to try to do too much when you have other members of your team out there. Boom! And she's knocked off her feet. I think that one caught her by surprise, Michael. Corey, you spoke about when a superstar is in six-man action and how crucial it is that they have the presence of mind to realize when they need to tag out. Not everyone who competes as part of a six-man team has the ability to do that. We've seen many times over the years. Look out, there's the tag. And that changes the entire outlook for these women, Michael. She goes down hard. She's going to be feeling that one for a while. Guys, Bianca Belair has wasted little time making a name for herself. I mean, from the minute she walked in the door, the entire women's division stood up and took notice. This might be it! Oh, my! 
Ronda Rousey's done playing. Oh, what impact. She's in firm control of this one. The situation just got real bad for Bianca Belair. As Byron mentioned, Bianca Belair's impact has been immediate. From the very first match in the 2017 May Young Classic, Bianca has been opening eyes. Yeah, and it's worth noting that in the first round of the Mae Young Classic, she gave up four inches and about 40 pounds to her opponent, but still won. That's a testament to Belair's immense strength. Oof! Bianca Belair, big move coming. Harsh impact. That was simply amazing. Yeah, she goes for the quick pin. And she kicks out of two. That's either sheer genius or complete stupidity, Cole. Going all the way up. This is it. Oh! We're looking at complete domination here. Oh, brutal. She's taking on some offense here. She doesn't want this lack of momentum to snowball. Yeah, but we all know that she can dish it out just as well as she can take it. And with that in mind, oh. I wouldn't be surprised to see her turn the tides here short. Well, it was just a few moments ago that it looked like she was going to sail to victory. But it looks like her opponent refuses to go down so easily. Oh, man, what a hit. Knocked right off the apron. Back in from the floor. Ronda Rousey got out of there in time. She reverses out of it. And not a second too soon. Close call there. There's no taller. There it is. She's made the tag. And her partner is on absolute fire right now. DDT. Oh, this is dangerous right here. Look at this. I think she's trying to prove a point here. We talked about strap. She looks for it once again. Technique. I think this is the beginning of the end, Michael. Quick thinking by Nia Jax. Oh, my clothesline. Forcefully delivered. This is going to be big, one way or another. Thanks to Raw General Manager Bianca Belair. Big move. Really working over the body. This one is over. With the tag is Nikki Bella. You can see the confidence just beaming from her right now. And she goes down hard. I don't even mark. The elbow! And she's driven down hard. This might just be the end of the road for her. Byron, we always make a point to talk about continuity amongst team members. In the six-man match, where Dean Ambrose teamed with the Hardys against Sheamus Cesaro and The Miz, both teams worked very well together. Oh, look, Nikki Bella's in position. When she gets in attack mode, look out. Takes her off her feet. That's how you eliminate somebody's vertical game. She's almost there. Oh, and she makes the tag. And not a moment too soon, Michael. And it's Nikki Bella showing some agility. When I think of memorable moments in Nikki Bella's career, I think of WrestleMania 33, when she and John Cena got a chance to take on The Miz and Maurice in a mixed tag team match long in the making. Boom, what impact! And her partner's looking to get back in there. She's tired of resting. She wants to go. That is a beautiful thing to watch. Bringing up that WrestleMania mixed tag. This is impressive. Nikki Bella's just waiting for the perfect time to strike. The perfect time to end this match. She's a live wire right now. Get out of her way. Look at Nikki go. And off the tag. Oh, what impact. Scoop slam. Nailed it. Oh, nasty impact. There are times during a six-man tag match where the hostility between two teams over for Nikki. Oh, oh Mark, she might have it. 
For some reason, she lets it go. Did you ever stop to think that she might have something else planned here? And she's trying to flip the script here. Easier said than done, Michael. Byron, you talked about the moment in six-man tag matches when all semblance of order breaks down. Many times, the two teams are so determined to tear each other apart that they don't pay attention to who the legal person in the ring is or where the referee is in their 10 count. That's a huge mistake. In the throes of battle, superstars lose their composure in what was a six-man tag match, breaks down into a pier six brawl. And if you don't keep an eye on the referee's count, you could get counted out and be the reason your team loses the match. I can see Byron making that mistake and ruin it for everybody. Over time, there have been various types of six-man teams that have been successful. There are family trios like the Guerreros, the Grams, the Andersons, and the Von Erics. There have been members of Fal Oh, here it comes! Page! With a page turner! I bet you feel foolish riding her off now. Impressive, but you got to be careful if you go to the well too often. Byron, you mentioned some families in oh, that should do it. It took two, but it looks like that one should do the trick. Oh, man, what a strike. Tag in. Something that is always important in a six-man match is having the ability to perform double-team moves. One of the things that successful six-man teams try and execute are double-team moves and then have the third team member perform a signature or finishing maneuver to deliver maximum impact to an opponent. Ooh. Wait a minute. Teamwork is always paramount in a six-man tag match. Superstars want to be able to have a level of teamwork where two members of the trio perform a double team move and the third member follows that up with a move so their opponent is really down for the count. The key is to deliver the maximum amount of punishment to your opponent in the least amount of time. You have until the referee's count of five. It's not like you have all day in the ring. Bianca Belair, big move coming. <sighs> this one's over, guys. Definitely got it all that time. Ladies and gentlemen, by now I'm sure you've Bianca Belair, big move coming. Pile driver. Game, set, match. This one is over. This might be it. Oh my. And no luck against Bianca Belair. Thank you for breaking down exactly what it means when Bianca Belair says she is the ist of NXT. But don't you think Bianca has a bit of an overinflated ego for somebody relatively new to the scene? Absolutely not, Saxton. Just ask top NXT stars like Candice LeRae or Lacey Evans if it was Belair's ego that beat them. Those were cases of Belair proving she truly is the ist of NXT. What a strike! Six-man tag team matches have been a staple of competition since the early days of sports entertainment. Two teams of three compete against one another under traditional tag team rules. Stipulations can be added like no disqualification, two out of three falls, elimination, falls count anywhere, or whatever else someone can think of. Matches. She shows signs of life. She's showing a lot more than that. Look at her go! Six-man tags can be fought under so many different types of stipulations. Teams can be part of the faction. The three superstars have aligned because of a common interest. The most crucial aspect to a six-man tag team being successful is that trio's ability to act as one cohesive unit. Three individuals working collectively at all times. So much can take place during a six-man tag match. Regardless of what type of match the teams of three are competing in, the members of that team must be on the same page. Oftentimes, the teams who have the best continuity are the most successful. Six-man tag team matches have been a staple of competition since the early days of sports entertainment. Two teams of three compete against one another under traditional tag team rules. Stipulations can be added like, here's the cover, shoulder tackle. Oh, what a shot. Yeah, she doesn't want to take too many more of those. Turn him 
tables. They ain't turned yet. Still got some work to do. She wants to beat her inside the ring. And she's back in the ring now. If Nikki Bella hits this one, it's over. Adding to what Michael she counters before it's too late. Ronda Rousey's done playing. You've got to believe this one's over. What a comeback. Oof. That has got to be it. Jeez, and I don't like Nikki Bella's chances in this one. Team matches are one thing, but make it three on three, and it's three times as good. Take a look. Hope everybody at home set those DVRs because that was a match you're going to want to watch again and again and again. 
epic. When any superstar, man or woman, is able to find a way to win a match as entertaining and action-filled as that one, they should be grateful and really proud. Some Here great stuff. Here are your winners, Nikki Bella, Bianca Belair, and Paige. An amazing contest comes to a close following a decisive pinfall victory. You can bet there's going to be a celebration tonight. And there's no denying that the Santa Clara crowd clearly liked what they just saw. Would you listen to them?